Hello, everyone. This is the Easy Allies podcast. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us this week, Ben Moore. Hey. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. Brandon Jones. Yeah. And in a completely separate room, Ian Hink. Uh, hi. <laughs> I have to use both hands for that. <laughs> both hands? What do you mean? Uh, to, well, to hear me, I have to push a button, and then I have to hold a mic, and to see me, I have to push another button. I'm going to get a mic stand for this mic, but yeah. we have okay. one. I, w- I want to make this as easy for you as possible. Uh, if you are listening, it's hard to appreciate. We are doing our first Easy Eyes podcast in the new studio. It's real quiet. How can we describe Let's describe it to listeners. <laughs> Jones? There's lots of lights. There's a lot of different colors going on in mm-hmm. the room. We have a brand new desk. Um, and being alone in here it sounded a little bit echoey. We were nervous about actually like soundproofing this. We've soundproofed the back wall significantly to avoid the street sounds. Yeah, I can't but hear I think people. the I think the ceiling could use a little more soundproofing. So mm. uh, the uh, the sound of this room will evolve as time goes on. I wish soundproofing like, is good. Sound treatment. So I'm actually really curious need. to get feedback from just purely on audio for yeah. the podcast. But it's like the first thing you're saying about yourself is yeah, I'm like I'm a nice guy, but <laughs> I don't do my laundry. I don't smell good. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> I just want to know like what's like what the studio looks like. We got, yeah, we got new chairs. We got, again, just, just color. We have a big, colorful, lit up background and, uh, and this brand new shiny desk that I'm very excited about mm-hmm. with LED lighting on the desk itself. Yeah. Bass traps. Sorry? Welcome to the future. Put some bass traps, I guess. I what are know. bass traps? What is that? The uh, they're like little corner wedges, <laughs> similar to the ones that are on the ceiling. Bass traps. Like yeah, they trap the bass in We were looking line? at corner wedges. And that's a yeah, thing? It's, it's called bass traps? We were legitimately iron, yeah. That's pretty cool. Bass, Bass traps, traps also are things you put under, like a studio monitor, to mm-hmm. cut down vibration. Neat. Uh, it's time to play Pro Strats only, please. This is where patrons of Easy Allies ask the experts of our panel for help in any game they're having trouble with. Hello, allies. I'm stuck in Dimensional Arcades 3. I'm having a really difficult time unlocking the Dolly d- dimension. Should I melt more clocks in the furnace or use the elongation gun on random NPCs? Really? Thanks for the input, but remember, pro strats only, please. Jordan. Every, all right. Okay. For people, as long as we're supplying context for our listeners, for everybody that's that might have missed the last couple episodes of the show, the point of this bit, I guess, is Kyle asks our community for easy questions to games and then makes us seem like abnormally smart, smart or really stupid. Like, I don't know. It's not a... I don't know how we're supposed to act. It's not a bit. Just to, like, I tried... I bit. asked them for hard questions. It's I not asked, a hard question. It's... You... They literally... They literally give you the elongation gun in that scene. It's like, that's the, that's the elongation gun part of the game. So are you it's calling so this backwards. person stupid or are you calling me stupid? I don't know what the thing... I don't know what... To, I don't know how to react in this bit. I don't... I have no problem calling you stupid, Kyle, but I just don't <laughs> understand if the... Because there's no way Blood, to know. Would you have known right. the answer? Would you have known elongation gun? Yes. Ben, would you? Yeah, dude. Ian, would you have known? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess I'll try harder next week. Jones, if you would begin corrections music, please. Uh, look, I gotta be honest with you. No corrections this week, simply because of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> what? Blame Donald Duck, dude. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts fixed the the corrections? Yeah, no, like I just like I did not scan back through the comments looking for corrections. Oh my we gotta, gosh. We got a we got a not too much. We didn't get anything dramatically wrong last week. <laughs> we don't even know. I, I do, because I read the comments. I still read them. Oh, but okay. then like I read them back through on the day of the okay. I think from yeah. here on out, I wanna blame all <laughs> mistakes on Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. This one in particular, Donald this Duck. This didn't happen because he came. Every time he's mad, I'm happy. <laughs> End corrections. Music, please. We do have an update. I like getting updates. So it was last year. We had a whole uh, bit about uh, EA and get, getting under some trouble in the country of Belgium uh, for oh, okay. microtransactions. Actually, Belgium said my, uh, loot boxes, microtransactions are illegal. Stop doing those. Um... Uh, loot boxes in particular, not all microtransactions. So most companies, uh, Valve with uh, Counter Strike, they stopped doing it. EA said, "No, <laughs> stop us. We're still selling FIFA coins." And it was announced today from EA they're no longer going to sell FIFA coins in Belgium. Oh my! Mm. Yeah, uh, as of January thirty first. And so what I want to ask the panel is, does it stop in Belgium? Hmm. 
<laughs> I think, <Wow. laughs> I think right now, it. I don't know that there's an. I don't know. If there's more momentum happening. Yeah, I feel like this comes in waves, where mm-hmm. yeah. it feels like every three or four months there is something that happens that kind of gets people concerned or angry, rightfully so. And then we have this conversation, and there's a big focus, and I feel like we move a little bit forward, and then it kind of dies down until three or four months it kicks back up again. Maybe not even quite that long, maybe less time than that. Yeah, I guess uh, my perspective and the way that I saw it back then even is that the corporations always win. I feel like there's no way EA will stop doing FIFA coins in the UK or the US. They make too much money off that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But le- at the same token, there's no way the UK or the US is going to go after EA for that. Yes. I, I don't and think. And you're so right. Yeah, the corporations win, right? I was, Hawaii is probably the strongest. You're right. There was some legislation yeah. in Hawaii. But, right, like, there's, they cannot defeat EA, I feel like. Which is stinks. I mean, like, so it is it is basically there's still the FIFA Ultimate Team. It's still in the game. You can still earn the currency within the game. I bet people in Belgium are having a pretty good time with that. Yeah. Right? Can you imagine this level <laughs> playing field where you just have to play the game to get credits? Did they announce, uh, you might not know this, but did they announce a rollout? So they're like, we're going to stop doing this, but in two weeks. I wonder well, if there, the is there a big mass right? buyout. Oh, so they, yeah, they did get in advance. All your old stuff still works. You're right. <laughs> okay. I guess people could start spending <laughs> right. now. You're so right, Jones. <laughs> Kyle, this makes me think of uh, when they speed run games, they'll often speed run the Japanese version because uh, the, the text will go faster. And they're like, oh, you should run this version of the game. <laughs> Uh, now it's like, oh, you should play the Belgian version. Yeah, we, <laughs> it's the best one. We are in those Belgian servers, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, really funny. What, yeah. what times we live in. Uh, I could see you going to other countries, I guess. I don't know. I don't know much about the government of Belgium, obviously. You know, like I don't know uh, which way they lean and things like that. I don't know who controls them and, even, you know, but like, I don't know. It's hard for me to see it spreading, but it's worked. I mean, it worked. It happened. Two listeners. Jones now has two bottles of water. There was there was a leftover <laughs> bottle of water that nobody claimed. My number one fear coming to life. That, just that, that these these multiply. That oh well, own, owning up for it on the podcast. From I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. It's mine now. And it takes <laughs> right? it takes two hands to own up to that. It really it means something. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> do you all remember my favorite way to start a podcast? Oh yeah. What is it, Blood? It's a game announcement. It's a game announcement. Uh, So this is weird because this game was kind of half announced already. Uh, Bandai Namco said, hey, we're Mm -hmm. making a Dragon Ball action RPG. Right, yeah. More details to come. And I didn't bring that up on the podcast. I was like, well, okay. Sure. Let's see it. Then uh, this weekend was the Dragon Ball World Tournament for Dragon Ball Fighters. Which had some cool announcements itself. Yeah, we should get into that, actually. Those are fun. Those are fun. Uh, Because even, like, when we saw this trailer for the uh, action RPG, it's just called Dragon Ball Project Z. I'm not even sure that's the final title. Is it Project Z? No. (laughs) (laughs) There is a space. We do at least have a space now. Yeah, Dragon Ball Project Z uh, is uh, going to be developed by CyberConnect. It is an action RPG where you simply play as Goku. The trailer, most of it, I would say 80% of it, maybe 90, is just seeing uh, CG versions of Dragon Ball episodes we've seen 500 times. Uh, but at the end, three unique shots watching Goku walking through environments. That looks pretty sick. Yes. And so that's the game. That's the promise. I think just the behavior of walking is, for me, strangely <laughs> enticing. Yeah. <laughs> because, I agree, dude. And it's, it's strange to, to think that like him doing something so dull seems so exciting. But the fact that they're willing to advertise it that way, like, look, he's just wandering around. It's like, yeah. oh, wow, that's, that's what interests me. I actually like uh, was excited about that fighting game that we played. We streamed one time. We were flying around the world. I had an overworld. And so, like, oh, yeah. was that Budokai see, Three? What think, was that? I'm pretty sure that was Budokai Three. Mm-hmm. You you would see these little uh, kind of like uh, uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. You would see these little sell- settlements, and I'm like, man, I wish I could just fly into those. Right. Even if there's a loading screen, you know, to just get a sense of how big the world was, and if something is east or west or south of another, you know, location. So I love open world games. I love that context. I love seeing something in the distance. Yeah. So it's like, ooh, you got me. I don't see any other people living in this world or any. These buildings look empty, but. You know, I might give that a shot. You know what would rule is if running along the snake actually takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. Like real life time. You have to do that for an hour, I think, is fair. (laughs) I'm curious, when they say action RPG, I wonder 
where the scales will balance out. I wonder how much RPG will be in it, for example. Right. Um, like, am I going to have different builds for my Goku? No, <laughs> probably not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it probably won't be significantly different. The thing that, I, I don't know, I, I have mixed feelings about it. I think an action RPG could be interesting, but they're, they say very clearly they're just retelling the events of Dragon Ball Z, Yeah, which is fine, mm-hmm. but we've had so many games do exactly that. Yeah, And I know it didn't really work out. There were problems that I had and you had with the way fighters did it, but there was excitement around like, oh, this this story in Fighters features Android 21, this new character. It felt fresh and exciting, whereas this, it's like, gotta go to Namek again. Yeah, and in the in the uh, Xenoverse games, you could at least mess with the yeah. timeline. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You exactly. That's a good thing to bring it. up. Um, different team, the Cyberpunk, or, sorry, Cyber Connect, um, is a completely different team from the one, excuse me, who makes the Xenoverse games, who are presumably working on Xenoverse 3. Here's a weird thing about this announcement. PC, PS4, Xbox One, that's it. Mm. Was that weird? That's weird because Fighters is on the Switch. Okay. Xenoverse Two it is came on the out Switch. Later on it the did, Switch, yeah. Bo- in both cases, yeah. yes. So, do you think they just don't want to announce it on Switch right now, and it will come to it later? I mean, if you're going to have a like, yeah, bigger open world kind of thing, it might be a hard thing to promise, depending yeah. on what they're going for. I don't know how long ago this started, but it does feel like. So many things were scheduled for just PS4, Xbox, and PC, and then after the Switch came out, they were like, oh no, we should do it on Switch. And so I just wonder if it's timing and six months down the line, you'll get a Switch version. That's what sucks. Yeah, we, they, didn't, they weren't doing interviews. They don't tell us a lot about the game. We, we have very little to extrapolate from that trailer. It could be huge. This game could be enormous. Or it could be four hours long. We just <laughs> don't know. We don't know what it looks like to fight somebody. We don't know what like how we power up our power pole so i mean there's not too much to talk about yet uh but 2019 is the release window we'll see that game by the end of this year oh wow yeah that's a little crazy it's a that's cool yeah i mean like i'm sorry this is wrong this is totally wrong I was thinking about my fantasy team. I was thinking about my <laughs> my, my video game fantasy <laughs> no, team no, no. and how I could probably get this for like two bucks but I mean, Ian's listening right now. But like, <laughs> just when a new game is announced, it'll come out by the end of the year. Like, you gotta you gotta pounce on that. Right. So sorry. That's that's where I was at right then. Uh, I got trapped in my own like, ooh, huh, I gotta get that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I, I always I love a game that's announced year of. I always love that. And and I mean, we see them as late as March and sometimes E3, the games that are coming out this year. So I I expect they'll make it. I bet they'll make that. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I I guess. To me, when a game's coming out this year, most of the time we see it, a lot more of it like up front. Whereas if we start with like a you know that like you said that tweet, it just kind of made it sound like this thing has just been greenlit. When like apparently not. Apparently this has been around for yeah. a while. So. You're right. Like Mortal Kombat did a blowout that weekend. Yeah. yeah, I get what you mean. It is a little different. We need to see more, and I'm I'm sure we will at, at E3. Do you think um, do you think we'll have a strong Xbox partnership, like Fighters did? Hmm. I kind of think it will. I think Microsoft liked. I like that they got like some cool runoff attention from sure. fighters. Uh, their booth had a lot of huge and Jump fighters Force line. As well. Yeah, and, and you're right. And Jump Force yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. So I bet I bet this will be a big part of their E3 press conference. Yeah, I mean, right now, like everybody can be a big part of the Xbox press conference. It feels like it should be three hours long, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, I wonder, just in a post fighters world, what the hype will be like for this because there's just so much excitement for fighters pre-release and there's still so much excitement about it now. I mean, just announcing a second season of characters has generated so much hype once again for fighters and it did so well at Evo. Like, I, I wonder if this, depending on what it is and depending on the scope of it, will kind of take a hit as a result, where if people look at this and be like, ah, oh, it looks fine, but I'm just gonna keep playing Fighters. Yeah, yeah, um, we should talk Obviously about- Obviously different genres. But. We should talk about the Fighters announcements. So then I watched, I watched Dragon Ball in high school. I haven't seen it since. Mm-hmm. I looked at the Fighters roster, everybody's there. Who could they possibly add to this game? They added, and I didn't think they were gonna do it, they mm-hmm. added Videl. But she's weak, how could they add her? They added Videl, they, Kind of added a two for one where Great Saiyaman is with <laughs> Videl as well, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. But Videl in Dragon Ball Z 
in the time period that they added her, was a really cool character. Yeah. And a lot of people wanted her. I don't know how likely it seemed. And so it's a cool addition. I think even with Great Saiyaman as well. And I think the way that they do it, like, I'm not a big fan of the Great Saiyaman character, but he was pretty funny in that trailer. Just yes. seeing him do goofy poses and thinking about, like, what Great Saiyaman is going to say to the other characters, I think that could be pretty entertaining. And I would love if Videl doesn't get KO'd, he steps in for the KO, things like that. Yeah. Basically, it's... So, Jones, Dragon Ball time. Begin Dragon Ball music. So, uh, <laughs> Gohan, son of Goku... Uh, in his late teenage years, he's go I think this is when he's say a man, right? Uh, his mom, uh, yeah. Chi Chi, uh, says, Chi -chi. <laughs> uh, "Focus on your don't stop being a Dragon Ball Z character. Focus on your studies." So he's like, okay. So he has a costume. He calls himself Great Saiyan Man. So his mom doesn't know that he's still being a cool Dragon Ball Z character. <laughs> good, good. Meanwhile, he has this girlfriend named Videl. Uh, and so that's oh. why he hops in to protect. Is him. there a relationship between Videl and Bulma? Because Videl was, I remember had, having to figure out how to pronounce the word Videl for a game sleuth. Oh, yeah, Videl. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, no relation. Got it. I just remember there was like an asset swap or a voice actor that was the same or something. Oh, I man. think we were Whether talking about Bulma specific was... to that game, but not. Okay. Yeah. But good memory. I just, I want to, anytime I have any kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? like the name Bulma came up and I was like, I think I'm going to wow them right now. But no, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so Ben, I mean like, cool, I guess, but that's not really spiking my interest. Who else could they possibly add to this? They added Jiren, where if you've watched Dragon Ball Super, specifically the final arc, You'll know about Jiren, very strong dude, had a pretty climactic battle with the, with the Z fighters in the Tournament of Power, and looked really good. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Jiren, I'm not going to go to bat for Jiren, doesn't excite me the way Videl excited me, but he looked pretty cool. He yeah. looked powerful the way that he was blasting people, his whole presence, his whole attitude, I think it'll blend well with the rest of the cast. But that's not all, Kyle. Well, hold on. I want to say one thing about Jiren. Yes, please. Uh, in Dragon Ball Super, I love Dragon Ball Super, to yeah. death, they had a hard time drawing Jiren. His eyes would never be consistent. They would always be like different shades. <laughs> I don't think shades. I noticed this at all. The reflection would... They don't know where to put the reflection in his eyes. They don't know how to like... He's, he's very top heavy. He's very bulky with not, yeah. not skinny legs, but it's definitely the, the weight is up top. They never knew how to draw him the same way twice is what I felt like. So I'm excited to see a 3D model of Jiren. And he looks good. His eyes look good. They yeah. got it down. Um, so that's it. Cool. Two new characters. That's not all. Oh. There's this new Dragon Ball Super movie that I saw and you saw. Mm -hmm. We both liked. Yeah. Getting a lot of hype on the interwebs right now. They're bringing that version of Broly, star of Dragon Ball Super Broly, mm -hmm. to Dragon Ball Fighters. Let's talk about some drama that was created. This is kind of interesting drama. We talked about it a bunch. I, I said at the time, this doesn't look sexy. This doesn't look like a sexy news story, but it kind of is. Talking about the Epic Game Store. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we're still feeling waves of that. This week, it was announced that Metro Exodus, huge, AAA? Double A. Huge double A release yeah, of sure. February will be exclusively launched PC wise on the Epic Game Store. If sort you, of. If you pre ordered it on Steam, pre order is good. That's valid. Uh, if you buy the physical PC version, you're getting a Steam code. You still got it on Steam. That exclusivity lasts a full year in 2020 of January, I think. No, February 2020. Uh, you'll be able to buy that game on Steam and presumably other stores, but that's that's crazy. If you were looking forward to buying that game on Steam, if you put it on your wish list, it's gone. They just pulled it. Yeah. How do we feel about this? I have very mixed feelings. Yeah, it's, it's not a great way to go about it. It's just not, I mean, it is, like you think, you, they pulled it. They took a thing that was there mm -hmm. for pre-order, and yeah. now it's not. But it sort of is because they're going to make sure they they honor the people that already paid for it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's like probably one of the worst ways an exclusive deal can go down. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, here's this thing that you were going to buy, and now you can't buy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, and especially because the Epic Store is so new, it's like how many people, like, care about the Epic Store? How many people 
or like really looking forward to like downloading another launcher, you know, it's you've got to give them something better than that. Yeah, and it's so, good for the publisher, sure, but well, 125 million people have it for Fortnite already. Very good point, Ian. Oh, sure. A lot of people have that launcher. Um, uh, and here's another thing: is in U.S. dollars, six. This was 60 U.S. dollars on Steam. It's now a 50 U.S. dollar game on the Epic Game Store. That's because Epic takes less of a cut from developers, so they can afford to put list games at cheaper prices. Not necessarily the case in all countries. Maybe you should write us in and tell us what the price changes in your particular country. I think in the U.K. it stayed the same. I think euros, yeah, I think euros stayed flat or some, the, something. The announcement of that was actually pretty funny to me because the, the statement on this one said, they take less so developers can de devote more for content creation or offer it at a cheaper price. And this one's at a cheaper price, so it's just like, oh, so you're not making the game better. You're just selling it for less. Yes. It was, it was weird to say that in the thing to me. It's, yeah, it's totally weird. Uh, and... Uh, this is also a really complicated thing to talk about is the cheaper websites where you can buy a game for pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. the, the newest releases and it's like, oh, that's 45 bucks on this store, I'm gonna get that. Uh, that's gone. Obviously you can't do that with the Epic Game Store. So all of those resources are poof. Oh, so Epic doesn't have any kind of codes like that that you can redeem? I think what Epic doesn't have is regional pricing. Mm. I might be corrected on that, but I think that's the big difference, is that they make the game of equal value across all their regions. And so you can't basically, there's no store that's buying up a bunch of Russian codes and then selling them to everybody for cheaper. So they're definitely strong arming it in, in a way that I don't think is very elegant, but I feel like the Epic Game Store kind of keeps doing these wild swings where I wonder if it'll just get to a point where they just strong arm their way through because it's not it's not just this it's not just Metro that's exclusive to the Epic Game Store. The Division 2 is also going to be exclusive on yeah. PC yep, yep. the Epic's Game Store. And then there's other things like uh, you know Hades. You can only get that from yep. Supergiant Games. Very well known uh, studio. You can only get that there. And then they're also doing free games as well. So like Axiom Verge is going to be free next month. And so just from my... Good free games. Yeah, good free games. I think they games. have the best free games in the biz. Right. And so so from my perspective, they just keep coming and I'm like, well, I'm at least going to go check it out. And I think that's really all they want. Like if they get enough of, well, at least I'm going to go check it out. And they keep doing that and they keep being it Make, making themselves part of the conversation, they keep spending this money. Uh, even things like when it comes closer to Metro Exodus release, I wonder if people are like, ah, I really want to play this on Steam. I don't like that they're doing this, but it is ten dollars cheaper. I wonder. I don't know. Maybe. But why? That's the thing, though. Like, why isn't ten dollars cheaper enough in terms of competition? You know, it's like that's a that's a pretty big deal for consumers to get that kind of a price cut. It's a huge deal. Yeah. It's going to be sixty dollars on consoles still. Yeah, right. That's nuts. Uh, but I do want to reiterate that that's not universal. That's not global. Maybe this is just ignorance. But it was, like, was there some sort of process? This exclusivity signing where, hey, you can have it ten dollars cheaper, but you can only appear here. Like what? Was there some sort of business deal that made it so it couldn't just be ten dollars cheaper on the Epic Game Store and exist on Steam? Right, you know, I, there's no way. This is all to promote the Epic Game Store, and I think it's going to keep going all year long. Hmm. These type of announcements? Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially with new games. Like, I, I, I hope that the pre-order situation doesn't keep going, but yeah, I assume new games are going to be, a lot of them will see, say, exclusive Epic Game Store. Because it's weird. It's like it almost, uh, according to Epic support, they do have regional pricing. Oh, okay. Says Ian Hay. Sure. Thanks, Ian. Thank, Thank you. Because, yeah, this is it's so confusing to me because I get a lot of angry tweets. I get people yeah. who are just like, hey, why were you liking the Epic Game Store? Right. Look what they do now. Yep. And so I have to presume that is a person in a country who the price went up for. I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, CD keys, are so, it's so weird to me how that business works. Like, I tried to look up how it works, and it's, like, sketchy. It's like, look, it's totally cool. And a lot of publishers are like, yeah, it's cool. We, we, love, we love that company. We love that store. And it's like, I don't understand why it's cheaper there then. It's like, it's, 
it is very confusing to me. Uh, maybe we can like dig into that a little deeper on another week. Yeah, but the, the wording is very interesting on the support page here. Cutting to new cam. Um, it says, yes, we do support regional pricing. We also have a set of suggested regional discounts based on local norms that are regularly reviewed. This was posted 53 days ago. Weird. <laughs> Super weird. Hmm. That's all it says about it. Huh. I just think it's tough to have one, like, like you know, these guys said too, it's tough to have one defined opinion about everything. Where it's like, the next epic, you know, announcement that they make about the store, I'm going to feel this way because I felt the same way about everything. Where... Sometimes when I see something, not Absolver, but the other one, the Dark Souls that just came out, no faces, Ashen, uh, Ashen. Ashen. like yeah. that was exciting. You know, I was like, didn't really know kind of, I don't know if we had a release date or something, but it was just like a game I forgot was about to come out. Yeah. And uh, I loved everything that I'd seen about it. And, and I'm like, I hope this game has a good launch. I hope it finds the audience that it wants to find. And then once like that weekend when Epic Game Store is coming out and they get to jump on that bandwagon and, and be a part of that announcement, like how exciting is that for a developer? Uh, and it's got to be, you know, obviously frustrating for people to have to download more software and jump, you know, sign up for, you know, get another password to remember and, and, and jump through more hoops to get on another service to get the game. But like how exciting for that publisher where I think the only the people who look the worst for this Metro thing is Metro, sadly, yeah. because they've clearly changed course. Like it's uh, like I can't really fault Epic enough for trying to hunt the big fish. And it's just weird to see, like, why did you bite that hook, you know, Metro? What are you getting out of this? We're like two weeks away, too. That's the crazy part. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's how close it is. So close. Yeah, I'm I'm sure this is underthinking this, but from my perspective, I think Metro Exodus looks great. Forgetting about the the store that it comes from, I just really want to play that game. And you want to play it on PC. And I want to, and I do, and I want to play it on PC. And so, on some level, if I can just get it and play it and it plays well and it's not too much of a hassle i'm okay with it however i'm worried because metro is not this huge franchise right yeah and they're doing this really awkwardly and so even if i play and enjoy the game and i am fine with everything i wonder if this has generated enough ill will that it's going to, like Brandon said, hurt Metro in a way that it didn't need to. Where they, they, it felt like they had this momentum, it was coming out at a good time, there wasn't a lot of competition in it, and now you have kind of this storm of negativity that just feels really clumsy in a way that it didn't need to. Yeah, that's, that's so true, Ben, is like, I wonder, th- they came out, Hey, this is great. Hey, great news, everybody. We're 50 bucks. And it just did not go that way. <laughs> right. You know, like that is, it is funny. Like you don't predict how messages will be received. Yeah. I mean, would you have all made the same call? Let's say you are, you're publishing a game, right? You can make more money with this game and sell more copies on the Epic Game Store, but you will make people mad that you're abandoning the Steam Store. Like I would depth. I would make the same call. Yeah, it's just a question of just how many people are talking about your game. That's like another thing too that's hard to quantify is like whether we're frustrated that it joined the service or not, people are talking about Metro right now. <laughs> and like had nothing happened, had they stayed the course, like, you know, w- the conversation maybe would have picked up at launch, like right when it comes mm-hmm. out, right when reviews start hitting the internet. So yeah. how desperate are you to get people talking about your game? I don't know. Think about it, I guess, maybe from their perspective, right? They they know the game in a way that we don't because it isn't out yet. Maybe the gamble that they're willing to make is, okay, we think Metro Exodus is so good, we think it's going to review so well that we'll overcome this hurdle. Like, by the time the embargo drops, we can beat this, basically. Yeah. Uh, I want to read their tweet. Oh, sure. Uh, so this comes from at THQ Nordic, but I believe it's Kok Media speaking. Okay. The decision to publish Metro Exodus as a timed Epic Store exclusive was made entirely on Koch Media's side, as Metro is their intellectual property. They are a sister company of THQ Nordic of Vienna, which is the reason why we can and will not comment on this matter. We cannot and will not. Uh, we do not want to categorically exclude the possibility of timed exclusives for any of our games in the future, but speaking in the here and now, we definitely want the players to choose the platform of their liking and make our portfolio available as many to as many outlets as possible. THQ's Nordic is saying, not us, not us. Wow. Uh. Ooh, wow. 
That is absolutely that's yeah. Messy, I feel like that's man. I did not read that before. Situation. That's interesting. I feel like that's easy to be real reductive about. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, people on that side saw that we got a better cut. That's the move they made, and they didn't foresee any of this. Yeah. And what's funny is like cock media is like big enough to be like, eh, we don't care. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. they, you can totally pin it on them. Your THQ Nordic, it's like, oh, it's the, it's the rich people. They made that call. And just like, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, we did. We want more money. And so I, I do think <laughs> What's though, the I, Ben, I sense sincerity though. I do think that THQ Nordic doesn't like this. Yeah. I, I have no reason to not believe them. And that's what I mean. Could you imagine that like, I, I wonder if guys like at the developer at like 4A games are just absolutely incensed and they can't do anything yeah 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 that is yes they're upset at this conversation we're having on this podcast you know <laughs> and so yeah uh, it is interesting that it comes from so far above and it's interesting that epic games is talking to so far above hmm. it wasn't the developer the small guy who said hey can we have more money epic it was the publisher of the highest degree so is are people coming to epic or is epic going to them and presenting them a deal Good question, Ben. This is what I'm, I'm wondering, too. Yeah. I think Epic is going to people. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, it's the other thing, too. It's really exciting is imagine you're Metro, and, like, all of a sudden you're a, one of the biggest things, probably the biggest game, the biggest, you know, wow game, that, whoa, that game's going to be on the store? Mm -hmm. And that's got to be attractive, and I'm sure that probably blinded them to a lot of the negativity that was going to come out from the announcement. So funny. It would have been enough. It would have been enough for that to be the $50 version of the game. You didn't have to have exclusivity. Right. right. It would have been enough. I just did, I'm bad at math, but I just did some math. Uh -huh. and I think Steam version at $60, they would have gotten $42 per sale. And on Epic at 50, they get $44 per sale. Because so, <laughs> I was wondering, like, what's the point of doing it if you're just discounting it anyway? It's $2. I'm bad at math, so maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so what percentages are you doing there? I did 30 for Steam and 12 for Epic. Okay. Um, Which is 18 off of 60 for Steam and 6 off of 50 for... Well, the weird thing about Steam was their new deal where if you sell more copies, your percentage goes down. And so it's hard to say where Metro would have landed. Mm. But it, Ian, I'm glad you did that math because it's like, that is a marginal difference. Yeah. I wonder if Epic's willing to take a hit on that. That might be what that's about. It's possible. They might have taken less of a percentage to... to take this blow against Steam. I mean, it's still a volume game though, right? Because like, if you're making plus $2 and selling for cheaper, theoretically, if you sold the same amount of copies, you're making more money. Yeah. I wonder if this is just a story that will kind of keep repeating as we go quarter to quarter, because yeah. you think about Metro Exodus, you think about the Division 2, those are two of the biggest games that are coming to PC in the first four months of the year. Hmm. More comp you all hear that? Oh. Sounds like it's podcast half on! The following are the official sponsors of Easy Allies for the month of January. Children's Miracle Network. More than 10 million kids enter a children's hospital across North America every year. To provide the best care for kids, children's hospitals rely on donations and community support. Since 1983, Children's Miracle Network hospitals have helped fill those fundraising gaps by raising more than $5 billion, most of it $1 at a time. Its various fundraising partners and programs support the nonprofit's mission to save and improve the lives of as many children as possible. The link to donate is in the description. Mango. iKeyless. iKeyless.com is proud to sponsor Easy Allies. If you need a replacement car key or remote, use offer code EZA at checkout for free shipping and 30% off of your order. Sweet Justice, a sound design company from the southern shores of the UK. They've worked on some of the biggest AAA titles, the most refreshing indie titles, and collaborated with the best development teams in the world. Help Restore Marshall's Teeth is a GoFundMe set up to help fellow gamer Marshall Parks restore his teeth after a medical condition known as GERD left them irreparably damaged. Marshall would like to thank the generous Easy Allies community for their support this month, as well as the Allies themselves. Thank you all so much. Hoag Law Business Law Firm. Whether you're starting a business at level one, stuck fighting the dreaded fundraising boss, or finally cashing out with a well-earned high score, you need a good business lawyer at your side. And now that good business lawyer has a new YouTube series. 
Virtual Legality. This week, Hogue discusses the ins and outs of copyright law with some of the crazy things we're seeing out of Sony's dreams, the legal rights and obligations of pre-orders in the wake of Kingdom Hearts, and the very different ways Nintendo and Bioware treated the messaging of their very bad news. Check it all out at youtube.com slash H-O-E-G law. Grad Rush. We have suffered innumerable losses from last week's raid by the shenanigans. With yesterday's declaration of war from Shenana Nation, it's unlikely we'll be able to recuperate in time. Make sure you find safety and stay close to your loved ones. On this day, January 30th, 2019, the shenanigans have won, and the world as we know it will never be the same. Elphanis. <laughs> and our mega sponsor! FantasyCritic.Games. Fantasy Critic is a new site where video gaming meets fantasy football. Grab your friends, create a league, and face off as you predict what the year's top rated video games will be. Just like fantasy football, you'll hold a draft and stock your roster with the hottest up and coming titles. At the end of the year, the player with the best lineup of games based on review scores courtesy of OpenCritic.com will be crowned the winner. Think you know what games will come out on top? Head to FantasyCritic.Games now and play for free forever. With well over 2,000 users already playing, launching the site has truly been a dream come true. To all of the allies and the entire EZA community, thank you. Also, congratulations on the new studio. All of these links are available in the description. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Uh, so, our next story ties uh, well into a couple of things that were brought up in uh, Podcast Halftime. We must talk about Nintendo's announcement for Metroid Prime 4. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was so strange. Here, I, I gotta, I gotta say his name even because this is a person I was not even familiar with, to be honest with you. Senior managing executive officer at Nintendo, Shinya Takahashi, came into, into this video calmly in his suit, white, white backdrop, to say, "I'm paraphrasing. Hey, everyone, uh, Metroid Prime Four is not good. <laughs> uh, Retro is gonna make it now, and they're starting over from scratch." Thanks for understanding. <laughs> that was a video. That was a video they yeah. published. Mm -hmm. Hard to believe. Well, hard, hard to fathom. What, that's, yeah, that's a thing that can happen. Yeah. Well, it's great that like he said that like we examined the this whole structure of how this is being made. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Yes. We got to tear it all down, start over. Yeah, and go to retro. Um, but yeah, so. I, I think it's uh, very, uh, very interesting. I think that it's weird that th this move like gives me more confidence in the game. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, this game's terrible. Oh, it's probably going to be good now. You know, <laughs> it's a different game. Yeah, it's a, they're starting over from scratch. Yeah. Not yeah. even, not even like Visceral's Amy Hennig. Like, we're going to use the assets. It's just like nothing. We're taking nothing from the original Metroid Prime Four. We have our own idea. But it's a whole different game. Yeah. Right. It's tricky because I'm not that attached to Metroid, and especially the Prime series I have little to no experience with outside of just working on features and, and, and watching. Yeah. We're doing a Prime playthrough? Uh, maybe one of these days. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's like I think about another Nintendo property that's supposedly going to be happening this year, and if they made a video where they were like, we were about 60% done the way with Animal Crossing. <laughs> we're not a fan. We're starting over. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I... I would be sad that I'm not getting it, but I'd be like, what is this game that they wanted to, to make? And now they're going to. And it seems weird because it, this is a setback, but at the same time, they must really care about Metroid Prime 4 a lot. They must be like, this. we cannot have this game cause harm to the Metroid series, Prime especially. It has to live up to a specific quality level. It's a fair point. And that's so great yeah. that they're not not—they're not only willing to do that, but not pull a you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake Last Guardian, where it's just like, we're just going to vanish. And every E3, for like four E3s, you're going to be wondering where we went, and then we'll show up later. And yeah, look at the new game. Hopefully that will... Stop asking questions. You know, it's it's. I like that. I don't know if they were inspired by a lot of other uh, franchises we've had to deal with this gen of just you know like what is going on? Where is that game? Mm -hmm. uh, but this was uh, uh, kudos Nintendo, kudos to the team. Not an easy thing to do, but I think at the end of the day, the absolute smartest way to handle a situation like this. Yeah, I have seen a positive reception to it. Mm -hmm. I've seen most people be very understanding of this. Thank you for talking to us, looking into a lens. Which is something we love. That's something yeah. I ask for a lot. And we, even with delays, it's like, look, just talk to us. Yeah, and one of the things uh, Hogue was saying in his video is, you know, they weren't making excuses. They weren't, like, trying to find a way to, like, give themselves an out. There's, like, 
nope, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. Like, just plain as day. And it's something that I feel like Nintendo doesn't, doesn't do very often is it shows that they, like, understand the stakes. They're mm -hmm. like, this one's got to be good. Yeah. Like, they feel as much pressure as we do, I guess, for it to be good. But, but it's in especially encouraging that they're doing it with Metroid. Because in the last decade, there has been... There have been many times where it feels like Metroid has struggled to find its identity. And to me, this signals that they understand what it means to the audience and they're willing to get behind it to a degree that when it does come out, it's going to be a huge deal for them. They're going to, they want this to be a title that can be up there with the best things that they've released on Switch. Um, and I think that's awesome, and I think they can take as much time as they need to do that. If that's their commitment, if that's their goal, do whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think I mentioned this on the Q&A, but it's, I think it's worth reiterating, reiterating that you know, I think right now the, the Switch is doing so well, and all their games that they're publishing right now are doing so well, that they, they, they can take that loss. Like They don't have to just say, Hey, we we you know like that's the sunk cost fallacy, right? It's like we've spent so much money on this already. We've got to put out to like justify this work that we've done. Mm -hmm. It's like no, no, no. This is trash. Just trash it. Blizzard we style. don't need it. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting because Blood they had a great year this year. Uh, off of I'm gonna say Super Mario Party, uh, Smash Bros, and Pokemon, and that was it. Yeah. So you're right. They don't need too much in a year to have huge success. I wonder though, since they are scrapping it entirely and starting over, like another conservative Metroid Prime game that is really well made but hits the notes that you would expect, let's say, just theoretically for the sake of conversation, mm -hmm. that would do well, it would be well received. But I also feel like Switch is kind of the platform to push the series in a different direction. Yeah. And I wonder which path they're going to take. I w is this going to be a weird game? I want Retro to not make a game called Metroid Prime 4, basically. I want Retro to, like, do it again. Get yourself a new trilogy. Retro, I believe in you. Kyle, I hear you, but kid, like that just seems like such a task, man. Mm -hmm. Just do something like Metroid Prime all over again. Well, because, like, bas ugh, I just, like, the, the story of Metroid kind of sucks like metroid prime has to be in the past because metroid fusion is the most recent yeah. and so basically samus is this weird little fused metroid creature now uh and that's like <laughs> canon that's the real samus i want to like let's let's see how she's doing that's let's, the game i want yeah, that's yeah, the I title do. of the game that i want the real samus <laughs> the real <laughs> samus uh, lastly, I just want to say, uh, I got a lot of tweets there, so it's like, oh boy, your fantasy team's in real trouble because I drafted Metroid uh, Prime 4. But here's what I want to say. Here's why I like uh, uh, the, the Fantasy League. Um, uh, fantasy done, Critic, man. right? FantasyCritic.game. Here's why I like it, okay? Because I got 24 points on Resident Evil. Any point above 90 is worth two. So you gotta go. You gotta go there. You gotta go right. for the 90s. So right. basically, I'm flat. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm down negative 70. I'm down zero. I get a flat thing for a game that doesn't come out. Right. Is this podcast just becoming like you? <laughs> Well, giving I updates think, on your fans. I could literally do it. I think honestly, really do honestly it. Kyle, I think the thing that's interesting about what you just said is I think you're overestimating how much we care about your league. Okay. I think that's like the real <laughs> the big takeaway here. That's a rule in like fantasy. As far as an ongoing segment is concerned. No, in a fantasy football podcast I listen to, the rule is never talk about your own league because it's so boring. I'm glad we have no images, screenshots, weird gameplay trailers or anything, even conversations about style choices and stuff. I'm glad there's nothing to compare. Oh, we, have, we, we started with nothing. Now we still have nothing. We yeah. just have a, a later date. We have a very ugly nice. logo. I'm there's glad no there's way not the something... logo will be worse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we still have a title too. It's still. Yeah. As far as we know, it's still prime for. It's now time for love and respect. Love and respect. Uh, we're in a new studio. It's a, it's it's a big occasion. It's a momentous thing. What better time than to play? Pokemon or real animal? Oh, this is the best game! <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of good games. This is the best one. This always comes to us from uh, Tanner Methvin. Thank you, Tanner. Let's get into it. Um, it inhales through its ear canals. Because of this system, 
It can cry continually without having to catch its breath. Pokemon. That's right. Do you know which one that is? No. Wismer. I was actually kind of imagining Wismer. <laughs> is there uh, a tactical strategy by crying continuously? No, because basically... That's why it couldn't have been a real animal. It's like, it's like, have you ever just wanted to cry more? <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's like these... There's just a drawing of like a Pokemon that's always like shouting. And so it's like, uh, there's, a re- there's a scientific reason it's always crying. Um, okay, here we go. I, I have a strategy for this, but I feel like I shouldn't say it until the game Save it till the end, because okay. I'm actually curious. Yeah. They have the densest fur in the world, sometimes with over one million individual hairs per square inch. Real. 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 Yeah, otters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. One, no. Who's counting a square inch with a million hairs in it? There was a time before video games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might be able to. Was, yeah, you might be able to find Arthur Morgan, probably. Yeah. 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 One, two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick up tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you do a centimeter and then extrapolate from there, but that is, that is crazy. I can't believe that's real. Okay. Uh, it is capable of delivering electric shocks from behind its eyes. Real Pokemon. animal. Pokemon. Real animal. Whoa. Ooh. It's Stargazer, a very scary looking fish. Whoa. I gotta Google that later. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Uh, Might as well be no, no details on how that helps it do what, but. Electric like shocks it, from behind its eyes? Yeah, uh, why? It's scare. It's probably like a deep sea creature, man. Oh, sure. Yeah. But, listen, if I'm down there, I'm already scared. You <laughs> yeah. don't need electricity. I'm with you, Ben. Very true. Uh, suction from its nostrils enables it to stick to cave walls during sleep. It leaves a heart-shaped mark behind. This is a Pokemon. 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 Yeah, and I think you could, uh, maybe you could guess. I, I can visualize this Pokemon. Drowsy? The, doesn't it have like a, a heart-shaped nose? Because mm-hmm. it, it leaves the heart-shaped yeah, nose yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah. But okay. is, is it, it's like kind of bat-like. Woobat. Nice, yeah, Ben. Okay. Yeah, Woobat. I didn't remember the name. Yeah, very nice. Uh, it can withstand cold of minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to say real. That's it? Yeah. I'll go Pokemon. Why not? Pokemon. That's Pokemon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. I have to assume minus 150 is impossible to survive in. Sure. I don't think so, but oh. it's, yeah, it's just <laughs> okay. a weird, like. <laughs> Let me tell you about my trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blood, were you in danger? I no. am sad that's not backed up with a story, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. <laughs> when I lived in Alaska. Well, no, like, uh, I did negative like, 200. There's like the little, like, little water bears and things like that that you talk about being able to survive in deep space. And gotcha, I'd gotcha. want you to start that story with, when I worked at Planet GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Snowrunt is that Pokemon. Uh, for reference, polar bears live in temperatures of around. Oh, here we go. This is actually this is not. This was added to that. Polar bears negative twenty to negative forty. So okay. one fifty is absurd. Ah. Um, if it digs at an incredible pace, it may snap off its spikes and claws that grow back in a day. A I'm gonna day say Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, it's Pokemon. It's an old one from Red and Blue. Digs. Sandshrew. Sand Slash, okay. Ben. You're oh, killing okay. this, dude. You're doing great. It defends itself by launching hairs from its body towards its attackers. It has multiple it has multiple types of hair to specialize for different predators. Specialized hair seems Pokemon-y to me. I'm gonna say I'll go real. real. Ben, you're gonna hate this one. That's real. That's a that's a spider, isn't it? That's a tarantula. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. How freaky is that? It's like no, don't let's not do oh, this. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> because, like, With the other ones we can, but <laughs> multiple hairs, dude. No. Okay, all right, all right. All it right. just gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> its pincers often fall off. The meat in its claws is nasty and stinking. What? Uh, Pokemon. Wait, one more time. Yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, okay. nasty and stinking. That's yeah, gotta what? be a Pokedex. Uh, <laughs> Crodnot. So not Kingler. Crodnot has the nasty, stinking meat. Kingler, go ahead and eat that. Uh, their teeth make up more space in their head than their brain. Real. Yeah, real. Pokemon. It's real. Mm. What is this thing? Is it a shark? No. Is it a cow? Aardvark? I'm going to give it to Ian because it's a horse. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. I okay. think cows have big brains. I think cows are pretty smart. Okay. Look at the big brain on cow. <laughs> Many people believe that deep in the forest where they live, there is a peaceful place where there is no war. Pokemon. Pokemon. Yes. The forest where they live. What? 
<laughs> I feel like you're trolling me there. It's like the first page of a children's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tranquil is that's a bird. Okay. Um, while hunting for worms, it will emit flatulence to draw them out from the underground to the surface. Real. Real. Yeah. Why do you say real so confidently? Just sounds like a weird thing animals would do. Where, what? What? Without maybe even realizing can you, can you it's doing it. Can read the description one more time? Uh, while hunting for worms, it will emit flatulence to draw them out from the underground to the surface. Mm. Let me ask you this. What continent do you think this thing lives in? Australia? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Bastion thrush. Nice. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. Sending Don't out that, know what that, is. that sweet flatulence. Um, <laughs> eh, this one might be Wait, fun. So, okay. Go ahead. What's up? Do researchers... They gotta smell that for science. They gotta smell it for science. All right. As so you get the infrared, so Wait, you actually see you actually it think travel it smells the so heat. So bad that it, it smokes them out. I bet that's no, the actual no. no. Thing. I think it's attracting them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, oh, the flatulence. Yeah. What's that? Why didn't we evolve that? We don't hunt for worms. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're picking apples off the trees, man. We're not digging around. <laughs> This is from we're, eating, we're eating berries and bananas. Come on, man. Uh, Blood, I'm going to lean heavy on you on this one. Okay. Sorry, just Sam. Uh, hello, allies. Do you think we will have see more of an emphasis on sound technology in the next generation, such as Dolby Atmos or DTS-X? A small amount of games implement Dol Dolby Atmos on Xbox and PC right now. Uh, in fact... RE2 Remake, in fact, excuse me, in fact, RE2 Remake in implements, and I was utterly delighted to find in the sound settings of Dolby Atmos option. Both sound codecs allow you to hear sound over overhead and a more smooth transition between channels. I really hope that they play, that the, both the PlayStation and Xbox will support this to, for, as for me, it's an absolute treat. Especially in a game like Resident Evil 2 Remake, where every little sound from above, behind, or the side makes the room feel as if it's closing in on you. Love and respect, Sam. Um, I would imagine that they would both support it. Uh, I don't know that that's going to get any kind of attention. Uh, I mean, Xbox One X kind of grab that limelight and at E3 they had a little demo room with the Atmos demo. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that from here that it's really going to be much more than okay, check that box. Yeah. You know, like they do with the surround sound codex now. Yeah, and it's just like it's not an attractive thing to talk about. Yeah. That's the sucky part. Is well, it actually doesn't add too much value to a console to most they, people. They picked the right word, I think. They called it a treat. Yes. And that's what it is. Oh, look at that. You mm -hmm. know, it's not necessarily something you'll see in headlines. It's not going to be said out loud at a press conference, I don't think. Sweet justice, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I know. I like Because <laughs> the thing is, the people who do care, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's tricky. But RE2 was a game that made me rethink, especially now that you know we're moving you had out, out of the studio. Uh, I, I, oh. I eventually did. I, nice. I did not. I, I mentioned to Bloodworth. I was like, I should probably do that. Bloodworth's like, you're not doing that. The sound like, oh, in oh, RE2 sorry. is unreal. It really helps. Oh, my God. It's, it helps to know where things are, wink, wink, nudge, yes. nudge. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Play with headphones. Everything. Scarier than zombies, baby. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's a, it's a cool perspective. Uh, I hope so. I like. I hope for the people who care about sound deeply, such as Sam, um, that it is a huge deal. Do you remember, like, the PlayStation One was like the best CD player for its price? Yeah, because of the audio <laughs> chip or whatever. Yeah, That's right. nuts to me. Like, there's a fact we went over on this podcast. I I want to be back there. I want to be back there, dude. Where it's like the people are like, I need a, I need a good CD player. I need a PlayStation Five, dude. <laughs> you're <laughs> such a '90s kid. I'm such a '90s kid. It's time for bets. Next week's bet is about Wargroove, which will be released on Friday, February 1st. How many times will the word advance appear in the top 10 most recent reviews on OpenCritic.com? I just like that title. Wargroove? War Groove. Yeah. I kind of hate it. 11. Groovy Ooh, Jonesy. Ooh. I'm going lucky number 13. E ben. 11, baby. Oh, oh, no. I said nine. Nice. Nice, Kyle. And Ian? 12. Okay, wow. we got okay. that low locked in. But Whoa. I really think it's going to be up there. It's going to be 10 or 11. or 12. Oh, man. Good bets, everybody. Last week's bet Who's got the, oh, was about Kingdom Hearts 3, bet, which released this Tuesday, uh, January 29th. Today. Technically released today. I'm like, man, I just had a crazy night last night. How many shoes will be on the back of the box was our bet. Jones, you bet 12. Huber bet 13. Damiani bet 5. I bet 9. Ian bet 17. Thank you to everybody who tweeted the box at me. Um, 
most people like they tweeted me the box at me and they're like three shoes and I'm like, are you paying attention? <laughs> oh. Let's count these shoes. First of all, I asked Huber and Jones if boots count as shoes. They both said yes. Mm-hmm. So here we go. One Goofy shoe in the Frozen screenshot. You see Goofy's shoe in the Just background. Just one. Yeah. There's the shot of Sora, Buzz, and Woody riding a rocket. Sora's got two shoes. Buzz Lightyear's got two shoes. Woody, just one boot. The other boot, can't see it. Wait, is, does Buzz have shoes, or are they like part of the whole suit? They're actually separate. They, okay. they have a, their own separate joint. So I believe those, mm. I would call, call, count those as shoes. Um, and like I know it's hard to see from the back of the box. What you can do, if you're somebody who cares about bets like I do, you can find that very screenshot online and look at it in greater detail, and you can clearly see two Buzz Lightyear shoes. Uh, then you look at the Big Hero 6 image. You got two Baymax shoes. Those aren't his real feet. His real feet are white. And... You see Go-Go there, you see two yellow knees, and you're like, oh, those are just knee pads. No, you gotta, you gotta Google Go-Go. You gotta look at what her design looks like. Those are boots. She's Ooh. got tall boots all the way up to the knee. Therefore, shoes. Therefore, 10 shoes. Therefore, a big win for Kyle with his bet of nine. <laughs> wow. Is it a problem that you're the one who counts these? It's a big problem. <laughs> I, I, am, I, yeah, wit- I witnessed the box. Yeah. I witnessed the box art, you know. Well, uh, I'm on his team, so maybe <laughs> I can't be trusted. That brings us to Scrappy Little Pigs 3. Weak! And Gorgeous Gorillas 0. <laughs> Before we end this podcast, I got to give a huge shout out to Joe Ellis and Chris LaRue, the two people who made the fancy intro that you saw. Maybe you saw some lower thirds. Maybe if you're listening, it sounded like there's some real neat graphics happening. Uh, (laughs) These two people made it happen. Uh, Joe Ellis is at Joe David Ellis, uh, did more of the concept design. Chris Chris LaRue is uh, the animation and motion graphics. Um, And Joe in particular is a freelancer looking for work for anyone in the community. If you're interested in hiring him or just reach out to him, at Joe underscore David underscore Ellis. And again, Chris LaRue is at Chris L-E-R-O-U-X. Can I do a quick tease? Sure. Uh, Also, yes, huge shout out to these guys. They might have done work for another podcast. Ooh. That might happen in the relatively near future. Do you host any other? Ah! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cool, yeah, thank you to you two. Uh, It's fun to have a new studio with new graphics. Pretty, Pretty cool. Uh, hey, I won that bet. <laughs> I get the right and responsibility to share my Twitter handle with the world. I get to uh, promote any Easy Eyes video I'd like to promote. I get to have the final word on anything I've disagreed with, want to reiterate, or just popped into my mind. And I get to sign off with my trademark, sign off. So let's start with at Kyle Bossman. I gotta be honest with you, during Kingdom Hearts, I'm not gonna look at your tweets. I'm not going to be on there too much. I like I don't cuz the thing is there's something in the game that's not in trailers and there's like a ticking clock, dude. There's a ticking clock until people think it's okay to talk about this I, now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um and so like I just like I just, yeah, just delete Twitter. Uh, but <laughs> hey, I'll I'll be back. Um <laughs> uh easy this video I'd like to promote uh, go check out uh, youtube.com slash plays because the new studio is not just this room. We also have a new s- streaming room that I actually like more than this room. It is, we got a brick wall in there, couches, it's just like, it's just a nice chill room to hang out and play video games. The first games video in. won't be on plays though. Oh, you're putting on, on Easy Eyes? Yeah, that's the main channel. That's the debut, yeah. Ooh, okay. Baby. That's the debut. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Be back, we'll be back on there next week. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so check out our debut group stream. We're playing Monopoly. Um, and so, yeah, you'll get a, a good vibe of the entire uh, studio displays that we have here in this, uh, this floor of this building, which is pretty cool. Um, final word. Uh, I just like, I'm just, Jones. It's not easy to prepare a podcast every week. And so I, I get like if it's kind of easy, but I know it's not too easy when I'm doing pro strats, please. I know that it's like, it seems that I'm the kind of guy who does jokes a lot, but yeah, you cannot talk while I'm doing this. It seems, I know it seems like I'm the kind of guy who like, likes to do like pranks and bits, but like it, to me, that's like, it, I, maybe it's Boy Cries Wolf, maybe it's my own dumb fault, but like, you don't have like, lie, maybe pull me aside after the podcast to like talk to, uh, just that's all I want to say about that. Um, and my trademark sign off tomorrow is forever all ours.
they have like this set number of times that they have to keep sneezing. The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. FantasyCritic.games Children's Miracle Network Elfanis Grad Rush Hogue Law Aikilis Mango Restore Marshall's Teeth Sweet Justice Andrew Reif Jojo Dentko Greg Kettering Caleb Crawford Oh Yes Cool Great Beaten Down Brian Nick Walker Hope, Sam G, Will Schmuck, Bradley Speeds, Paolo Costabel, Jake Musser, Richard G. Flowers, Dave Red, Zachary Wingate, Jan Tyson, Michael Bisegli, Ken Layer, Professor Metal Gear, Dan Sebring, Corey Jackson, Sigma, Tim O'Keefe, Ethan R.C., Mick Roper, Robert Stoffel, Mylene LaPearl Van Ass, Damnable Nook, Anti Ataraxia, Ali Cat, Demos Clay, Chum Nguyen, Discarded Digit, Thomas Wigginton Jr., Jay She, Matthew Pauling, Gino Elite, Silent Consonant, Blue, James Vitt, Jason A. Sackle, Luke Bennett, Candy Coated Thorns, 44 Stars, G. Levin, G. Ken, Jack Dylan Schneider, Michael Wilson, Stephen Thomason, Yasser Kurbushi, Hitman 47, Ryan Anderson, Matthew Brown, Colt Doss, Marcel Giru 17 Froelich, Samson Stormbomb, Alex A.I., XWF Outlaw, Phoenix Doss, Niz Kolojgaard, Peter Davis, Rack, Brad Lohman, Simon Anderson, Noah Weinstein, Tim Strothman, DRD7 of 14, Brad Grenz, Todd Yurkovic, Joe Burns, Patrick Chong, Sam Hendrick, Andy Drew, Lars Berger, Jonas Sekula, Jordan Kirk, Stephen Last, Ahmad Naki, The Banana Forklift Killer, Joachim Morovuo, Miguel Rivas, Calvin Hartanto, Marcel Markov, David Wen, Jesper Lawson, Manuel Chiti, Oni Black Mage, Matthew Holcomb, Daryl Schramm, Brent Phillips, Dale Sun, Catherine Lai, Gary James, John Santoro, Neuromod, Robert Crouch, Mikhail Aniel, Ulf himself, Jeffrey Ruchtenwald, Rainier Dennis Bautista, Wavering Radiant, Scott Adams, V8 Dave, Leroy Anderson, Janny Marcula, Ritz 1906, Eric Gustafson, Fabian Schuster, Toasty Soul, Christian Hundorf, Alex Lavanier, Tony Knox, I Sun Chor, Forrest, Caleb Ledoux, Mike Hook One, Brian Vilar, Mauricio Fuentes, Chris Garza, Quick Scares, Ian Ladarzik, Brian Foster, The Classiest Hobo, Vokaiser, Zinterax, Corey Landega, Modren, Paul Bishop, Sean Smith, Travis Miosi, Carl Williams, Jalen Scott, Adam Damon, Brandon White, Matt McCarthy, Sean Mackey, Gabriel Aberg, Morpheus, Tobias Hallberg, Sean M. Gabaldon, Reed Johnson, Joe Rutsky, Nergal 131, Manuel Thomas, Peter Wen, Adam Scherenbrock, Not Jack, Kurzestav Rogowski, Volker Bach, James Vest, Allison Burt, Ryan Feller, Jesse Ray, Jornar Haraldsvik, Blake Bonsack, Sean De Almeida, Cisco Ace Jackson Garcia, Daniel Mogo Sanchez, Kiraz, Robert Oresti, Trizak, Wouter De Hayes, Matthew Holmes, Settling Geek, Eric Maynard, Fabian Winkler, General Piet, Leon Keyes, Raymond Lee, Clay Roberts, JC3, Adam Lindsay, Shiana Metz, Todd Paxton, Faraz Rizvi, Andreas Bard, Jared Wheeler, Jeff Easton, Dakota Hayes, Zustick, Don Turner, Mumble Mumbleton, Masuki211, Alexander Zirianov, Aron Eardley, Jesse Fish, Paul Molson, Jason Joint, Edison S. Prada Jr., Alexander Braveglieri, Sarah Wampler, Travis Ng, Ahmad Al Rashed, Butt Puddin, Tuttle, Furious Action Gamer, Jonathan and Amy Alconis, Stuart Siddall, Michael Shriver, G. Sif, Mac Reed, Haley Hill, Andrew Stoke, Matt Gunther, There Is No Dana Only Zool, Evan Ang, Joshua Vancewall, Bites and Brews, 1D10 The Show, Kyle Quintero, Sebastian Trier, Aurelian Grenier, Bonnie and Jason Connor, Wen Bo Shan, Jeffrey Daniel Lasley, Stephen Walther, Matt, Kevin Camposano, Carlos Zuniga, Diggles, Ryan Cohen, Ibrahim Sozer, Roke Oat, Momo Rashid, Paul Sway, Rickard Enbaum, Michael Clendenan, Bread Roll Art, Sean German Efficiency Clinton, S Snake 24, Lee Young, Timo Yeager, Lindsey Wells, 
Stephen Campo, Hayden Hargraves, Calgareth, Eddie Reisner, Chase Caldwell, Halkin Sturz and Sturz, Nicholas Kroboth, Barry, Mikey Mizek Novak, Richard A. Paskvin, Joey Din, Adam Henry, Chris Hall, Ms. Racy, Beautiful Kai, Sean Rowe, Caffeine Rage, David Kennedy, John Burns, Durgesh Patel, Michael Lay, Kenneth Proceus, Mike Calvi, Sarah Flahavin, Jerry Fair, Anthony Daniel Galvin, Toro DK, Daniel Wong, Hadi Ali, Jameson Anderson, Vincent Foliot, Hutchitron, Ahab, Neo Bear, Sebastian Olson, Matthew Migler, Santiago Carrillo, Alex Glass, Junior Motomura, Delisi, Mithers Strongbeard, Daniel Data, Nycrypt, Alan Griffin, Mons Anderson, Elvin Skogheim, Jai Aldiar, Morgan Wirth, Sam Sorensen, Awesome Express, Shahir Khan, Zrail, Matt Ferguson, Vishal Singh, Felipe Aguilera, William Heaney, Christer Lundmark, Tim Mann, Chris the Pianist, Michelle Nubb, Michael Stevens, Sandra and Richard Acero, Andrew Smith, Battle Ox, Christian Sanabria, Pablo Rodriguez, Matthew Colomb, Jordan Phillips, Mick Malloy, Philip Klarskoff Jensen, Sun Pham, David Amaro, Dan Cleary, Alex Monaco, Arthur Henrique Chinaglia, Zach Kaczynski, Jameson Lapine, Nuno Amaral, Tyler Pepper, David Boyarski, Rahiv Maharaj, Ryan Wagner, Pete Cerny, Joachim Wiederberg, Christopher Santis, Andreas Coter, Extravaganza, Gali Gutierrez, Chris LaRue, The Fatty Show, Tender Brew, Jason Shields, Rickster EXE, Mohanad Saber, Sud Almasafer, Monica, Remy Loisel, Michael Kozachenko, Pete Shoemaker, Repas Edud, Irvin De La Torre, Max Harms, Straw Hat Ninja, Cyberboa, Christophe Fatui, Azazel Valkyrie, GW Fox, Alexander McEakern, Jeffrey Murillo, Jan Hildebrandt, Mazram Tain, Chris Bennett, Liam Ahern, Crediar, Jesse Vitelli, Self Confessed Cynic, A Pack of Puppies, V. Cura Ray, Tristan Howard, Jason I, Andrea, Sean Cornett, Jeremiah Snowden, Materia Addict, Robert I, Will Arrowood, Tyler Wallace, Blaster Master, Gustav Strombaum, Christoph Packlinger, Thomas Mullins, Nefertiti Jenkins, Malcolm Moschette, Adam, Cal, Joel Olson, Israel Pacheco, Quinn Riley, Robert Ori Einerson, Christopher Donnelly, Matt Karwaski, Patrick, Logan Young, Trevor Thomas, Toby D. Ryman Schneider, Matthias Clare, Self Imposed Illegitimate Child, Joel Short, Marco Hernandez, Magnus Rasmussen, Rob Vedvik, Clinton Hayes, Chad Ball, Seyun Kim, Struggler, Beetlehorn, Randall Crittenden, Jose Gutierrez, Tense George, Dominic Brown, Sal Ramon, Chad McIntosh, Bunny Chen, Isaac Swanson, Joey and Kate, Raymond Chow, Kari Karasan, Ian Anderson, Zahid Hosseini Karami, Dan Pan 16, C.S. Lewis, Oru Kachino, Splontot, Jana, Roy Sung, Marius Smith, Kim Monk von der Leith Hagensen Petersen, Colin Hoyleman, Reed Marlett, Thorfkin, Jethrin, Max His Shame Terman, Shanley Ladia, Rerun, Linson Wu, Luis Ibarra, Philip Higdon, James Brown, Max Cannon, Spencer Stevens, Supernova Smith, Omen Ow, Russell Bateman, BM5, Elliot Moscow, Richard Gunther, Ivan Ponce, Jay Potter, Tolls JTJ, Christopher A. Butler, John Prey, Sean Essen, Sebastian Urban, Matt Ford, Marco Zanone, Alex Church, Culinary Stud.